I need the net. Bridge fishing, baby. Bridge fishing, baby. We're fishing long key, and uh, we're gonna give you guys some tips. If you're starting out and trying to learn how to do some bridge fishing, we're gonna give you a few tips that we know uh, to help you get started, guys. So enjoy the episode, and uh, tight lines. So I'm here at the Real Hooker Bait and Tackle today, and I'm gonna go through some of the things that you need for bridge fishing. Sir, you're gonna have to move that vehicle, sir. It, it, it's good parking only? Only for snug parking only. That's pulling, right? That's pulling. Oh, it's not pulling no more. This video is brought to you by the Real Hooker Bait and Tackle and Nines Optics. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of CEO Fishing. In this episode, we're going bridge fishing. And before you go bridge fishing, there's some things that you need that are pretty much mandatory for having success fishing on the bridges. First of all, you need a good live bait system. These bubbler donuts, they produce more oxygen inside the live wells or the bait buckets, allowing your bait to stay alive and fresh a lot longer. The ones that come with the bubblers, they're sufficient for small buckets, but if you have a lot of shrimp or pinfish and other larger baits, you want as much oxygen in that water as you can to keep those baits alive. Now for fishing gear, you wanna have a bait runner something that has a switch on it. So basically what this does, when you throw out your line, you can set up like three or four bait runners and then have another jigging rod available to work while you're waiting on something to bite your bait. So what's good about these bait runners is, you see, it's normal, the drag is nice and tight. They have a switch on them, so I hit that switch. So if something hits your bait and it starts running, it just spins and runs. The problem with fishing on a bridge is if you don't have this loose and a fish hits, your whole rod and everything's gonna flip up over the bridge and your investment and your money is gonna be gone along with your fish and your gear. So it's always Im almost imperative to have a bait runner. If not, it's very important to make sure you have your drag set extremely loose so if a fish does hit, it doesn't pull your gear over. This, you can preset your drag, fish hits, click it automatically goes and now your drag is set the way you want it so get some bait runners if you want to do some bridge fishing because they will be very helpful now once you have your bait runner picked out you want to pair it up with a rod that suits your needs there's a bunch of options from star rods and pin that you can choose from that will allow you to cast out and fight some heavy fish here at the Real Hooker Bait and Tackle, you have a wide variety of different types of shrimp jigs and bait jigs. You want different weights because depending upon the current, you want it. You want to have either a lighter weight or a heavier weight to be able to drop it down to the depth that you need without the bait sitting on top of the water. Now there's times you want the bait on top of the water, but in most scenarios, you want to be able to drop the line down and jig it on the bottom for a mutton or a mangrove snapper or maybe a yellow jack. And if you don't have enough weight and the current's too strong, it's just gonna keep drifting back away from your strike zone. Now for the bait runner I was talking about, you wanna have probably some circle hooks. I prefer circle hooks, like three-aught, four-aught circle hooks. And you wanna set it up on a Carolina rig or a knocker rig. I prefer the Carolina rig because it allows me to have a long leader and I use an egg weight, something like this, to drop my bait to the bottom with a long leader for the bait to drift back and sit in the current and not on the bottom. If you have something that's sitting out there and you only have the weight right at the bait, it's gonna sit on the bottom, it's gonna sit on the floor, and it's not gonna move. With a knocker rig or a Carolina rig, you literally put the weight down, the weight hits, but you have the line extended off so that the bait is drifting near the bottom in the current. And again, you want a variety of different weights because depending on the current, different weights will get down to different depths. If the current is absolutely ripping, a small weight like this will not keep the bait down at the bottom. So you need to use something a little bit heavier to keep it down. Now you can get yourself a really good bridge cart and invest some money in a bridge cart or you can grab a backpack to carry your tackle and your gear to the spot where you're fishing. But ultimately, a bridge cart is perfect because you're gonna want a cooler for all the fish that you're gonna catch because you've been watching this video. So you wanna be able to carry your cooler, uh, multiple rods. Typically, I go with about four different setups, four rods. I have two on a bait runner with the knocker rigs or with the Carolina rig, and then I have two 
one with for live bait and one with a lure so that I can jig the piling as I'm moving down the bridge. You also want to make sure you have a good bridge net for those fish that are too big to flip up on your line because there's nothing worse than catching a huge fish, a big mutton or a big Kobe or something and not being able to lift it up because you cannot lift it on your rod. You wanna be able to drop a bridge net down to bring up your catch. I mean, if you wanna bring home big fish for dinner. And if you're like me and you're a diehard artificial user, which I use both live and artificial, but, but I love jigging with artificial shrimp and using swim baits. And Monster 3X has a whole line of shrimp that are perfect for the bridge. Mangrove snapper go nuts for these. You know, obviously you have to have the right color at the right time of day and all of that. But if you just throw a nice little ball jig on there, basic ball jig, again, the size that you use will be dependent on the current that's there. But if you jig these and give them action near the pilings, I guarantee you're gonna hook up on some fish. And if you want something a little bit bigger, they've got bigger sizes, but check out these Monster 3X here at the Real Hooker Bait and Tackle. Again, this one's bigger. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got a big one. Hey, we got a big one. Oh, oh, it's a grouper, grouper. Okay, let me come on this way. Let me come this way. Getting jiggy with it. Woo. Yes, sir. What I get? What I get? What I get? A little groupy group. On the artificial? On the Monster 3X, maybe just jigging the bridge. Nice. The day before we hit the bridge, you know, Eli and I went out and down some back roads and went for some brackish water fish. The saltwater side wasn't great because the spillway was closed for maintenance, but I ended up seeing some peacock bass and ripped a few out the water. So check out that footage before we get to the bridge. Fish gang, what's up? Hey guys, comment below, fish gang, and I'm gonna heart your comment. Go to the store and uh, cop a shirt, man. Fish King, what's up? Got him. Yeah. Peacock bass. Got another one. Come on. Another peacock bass. Let me uh, not hold him like that. There you go. Not too bad. Yeah. what it takes to go bridge fishing. Did they bite yet? Catch a fish? Yeah. All right, buddy. Get him. All right, all right. Gotta go put that work in. Today we're bridge fishing down in the Florida Keys and I love bridge fishing because I get to meet people. And in today's episode, I actually got to meet a few people that watch this channel and follow me on Instagram and my other social media platforms. So it's pretty cool. I love meeting everybody. So if you guys do see me out and about, anyone who's ever met me, they know I'm just a regular dude who loves fishing. So if you see me on the bridge, if you see me out fishing anywhere or in public, I don't care. Just say what's up because I'm always down to talk to and meet new people. In this episode, I'm taking my mini rod out to try and catch some fish on the mini rod off the bridge. But... We're hanging out and just having a good time. So enjoy the episode. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel with your notifications on if you do like this type of content because I've got all types of bridge fishing, backcountry, on my boat, freshwater, peacock bass, snakeheads, and largemouth bass and things of that nature. So if you like that content, hit that subscribe button right now because you don't want to miss any upcoming episodes. Look at this. Look at the size, look at the size of this one. Oh, damn. Yo, That's a pretty fish. That that's a pretty fish. I've never seen one that big, bro. Uh, how you doing, man? Good. Oh. Uh, what's your name? 
What's that? Have you? Oh, nice. Well, good, bro. Nice to meet you, man. Jig head and a little piece of shrimp? Yeah, bro. Well, what do you normally catch? Like snapper and yellowtail? I just caught a grouper. On that? But on, on the Monster 3X lure. Nice! What's that, snapper? <laughs> nice! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a 16 over there. Yeah. But that's bigger, that's fatter, man. That's a whole dinner. Yeah, that's Hell yeah. Really Get that. Oh, man. Yeah, man. What's your name? George. Nice to meet you, man. Oh. Well, he's catching the groceries today. <laughs> Hell yeah, nice catch, man. Oh, green mangrove, green mangrove. Oh, dude, like, come on, catch them up, Bobby. Green mangrove. Hey, I'm going to need a net. Should I try to force it? Uh, yeah, you watch got out, that. Watch out, 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 Man, Snook, you need a fish so you can say you caught one? I'm gonna throw this one back. I'm damn artificial. That is not what I was looking for. It's a cool fish. It's a very cool fish. But when you're trying to catch snapper, it's not what you want. So, so for a beginner, shut up, shut your ass up. I'm trying to do an interview over here. So for the paparazzi, for people, yeah, I'm your paparazzi. So for the people who are just beginning to learn how to come out on the bridge or they want to start doing it, do you have any like first time tips that might be helpful? Chum is key. Chum is key? Absolutely. So you chum, they will come? Yes, sir. All right. Check out the chum. The chump? Or the chump? The ch oh, the chump. All right, so today we're talking to Captain Snook. We just linked up with him on the bridge here. And uh, we're chumming. We're chumming because he said if you chum, they will come. Now, other than chum, do you have any pointers for people on the bridge who are wanting to learn how to fish it? You gotta go try. Just go try? Just go try. Trial and error. You see, bro? <laughs> Man, baby. Hold it up. Eli. Have you ever seen one this big before? <laughs> Look at that. You won't. Like All right. Black chub, right? So we said we're, we're gonna stop, catch black chub. Black chubs. Hey. <laughs> big bump, big bump, big bump. I'm on. Get it, dog. Yeah, got him. Get it, dog. Watch out, watch out. Heck, Get up. Okay. I eat the net again. Nice. Another one. <laughs> You're all snagged up. But that's a decent size man. Hey, let's see if we can get that's some more. 16, yeah, it is. You got him? You got him? There we go. Fish on. Nah, another one of these. Ah, uh, no. It's not the mangrove I'm looking for, people. What do we got? Bridge fishing. Yeah. yeah, it's the wrong fish, but it's cool. Another grouper. A little strawberry. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you like my content, hey, hit subscribe right now. You don't want to miss any upcoming episodes because I've got the boat ready. I got it back from the mechanic. Big shout out to K&J Marine. Danny, you got my boat running smooth, and I'm ready to take it out for some snook. But until next time, guys, keep your head up, keep moving forward in tight lines. Zzz.